A great big welcome to everybody. Steve Dotto here, along with in person Scott Stratton. How you doing, Scott? Ooh, do we have to? Do I have to say all things considered? I just, I just, it's just been said a lot. So, um, all things considered, uh, I'm, I'm doing decent. Well, just as we, just as I pushed the live button, I got pinged on my notifications. A good buddy of mine, actually, uh, my trainer, PJ Renz, just posted. She goes, "Oh my God, you got Scott Stratton on! I love him." <laughs> there you go. Yay! And twenty dollars <laughs> is on the way to that person. So thank you for that. I pay well for compliments. A uh, great big welcome to everybody. We are here on Gray Matters Unscripted. Steve Dotto here, along with Scott Stratton. And the topic du jour we're going to be talking is. I'm, 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 and we are, we're not ignoring the pandemic anymore. I've just given up on that. I, I, I tried to deliver content with normality saying, let's just talk about the things that were important to us before. Yeah. But nothing seems that important that happened before anymore. So leaning into this a bit, I wanted to invite Scott on because Scott, when day one happened, it was one of the people you, your, your picture, your, your name came to mind for me. And I'm thinking, what the hell? is life like for these guys right now guys that make their living full-time speaking yeah what the heck is life like for them because i went through this in 2008 yeah. uh with the with the economic meltdown with yeah. my tv show yeah. i went from like eight sponsors on a wednesday and we were recording the show already to four sponsors left on the show on the friday and i was just like i don't have enough money to do this anymore what's happened in my business i went through it i, I barely remember what I went through, but you guys went through that two months ago. What, what was day one like when you realized and those cancellations started to come in? It's fine. So, and by the way, I, I watched the show in the 2000s. So this is just a treat for me to be on this right now. So I appreciate the compliment from people that I'm on the show, but I'm, I'm giddy to be, be on here right now. Uh, so uh, understand the context of it. I wanted to be a, a keynote speaker since I was 12. Like a lot of people wanted to be a, an astronaut or a firefighter. And I'm, I saw a, a video of Les Brown on stage on our TV. And I'm like, that's a thing. Like you can do that. You can just yell at people and go home. How do I do that, mom? And then she's like, yeah, it's a speaker. And I, I, and I always knew I was a performer and a storyteller. And I'd never had a fear of speaking. So in the past 10 years, that I've achieved my dream. I do 60, 70 keynotes every year like clockwork for the past decade. Like I was living the dream. And it was the goal was just to keep doing that. Like people would say, because I climbed the ladder of in the speaking industry and doing well. And my my friends like, so what's next? And he did his arm like this, like he did a diagonal. He's like, what's next? And I'm like, flat it. Let's just this for the next forty years, please. Like I I I don't have this urge for that endless pursuit of more. Like it's not. Were, I don't I don't achieve something. I'm like, let's go to the bigger thing. You were living the dream. It hundred percent. And then so. You know, the rumblings and I went from, um, I was getting ready to go on the road again. And um, I had four gigs in uh, eight days coming up, kind of scattered throughout um, the US and uh, and I'm based in, in Toronto. Uh, and uh, it went from all four gigs happening and looking at it saying, oh, this this virus thing is, is coming to saying, well, I hope I get to do these gigs before it hits to, I hope one, of, one or two of these gigs happen to I hope they all cancel in a very quick amount of time, like literally just like by that whole description I did was in a matter of three days. So you were looking at the bigger picture. You weren't you weren't crushed by the prospect of all of your business going away. You had an actual societal fear of like, oh my gosh, I hope this doesn't go ahead. This is way worse than we imagined. Very quickly. So it was initially saying, you know, these these are like my gigs, like these are my and and I've earned this right to do this and and I go out and do it and and I love it and I, I get paid well to do it to um, it's it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs pretty much for humans. It was, we need to be safe for everybody. And it was immediate. And like we had, so one of our kids was in his first year at UBC, which is on the West coast of Canada. You know, we're out on the East coast. Another one of the kids is, is away. Allison, who's not only my wife, but my business partner and the co-author, she's in Utah at an animal sanctuary with our daughter. And, and and doing an annual kind of trip there to volunteer. And within 48 hours, it was, let's look at, you might want to come back early to everybody home now. Uh, and it was pulling, you know, our uh, Owen out of UBC and, and, and just getting wow. them just like pulling your child out of school or before they say it's time. 
is a weird parenting move. Like it's usually you saying you should be going to school, you should be going to it. And I'm not like leave school and like, like come on out. But once they all got here, once everybody, so we have, we have five kids between the age of 13 and 23. Once they were all here and once Alice and I were here together, I just took a deep breath and I'm like, it's Maslow. It's, 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 each layer, you can't look at one level without that base one. The base one was your health, your, 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 the family, your loved ones, and then your fellow human. And so I've had some, some grief, you know, over that. And part of it was because, you know, we get known for what we do professionally, you know, and, and, and for people like, 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 like you and I, where people know us in our certain circles and our fields, and we're known as a, uh, um, uh, an expert or an influence of it, or an, uh, a celebrity, a micro celebrity. And from, in my case, in certain circles, it's, you know, that's also an ego push. That's, uh, you know, my payment for talks was applause, my, my, and laughs so much. My stuff's based off humor, you know, and this all came down and a lot of people in speaking were saying, well, we can do it virtual and it's the same. And I'm like, it's not for who nobody across the board. It's not the same for attendees, event planners, or speakers. Like I just did a webinar two days ago and like it was done and I just clicked leave meeting. And then I just sat right here and just went, nobody said good, good job, Scott. What was nobody that? Came up to you and and, and pit buttonholed you to ask you a question <laughs> or do you remember me from so and so? I saw you. Speaking. Yeah. And yeah. Ob obviously with perspective and I'm coming as, as such a, it's such a small thing in comparing what's going on. Uh, in, in the world, but in, you know, my brain, we got to process these things. And I, I had built this thing where I got a, I got applause for my job, man. Like how, who else does that? Like athletes and musicians, but athletes can get booed. Yeah. Musicians, musicians actually have to do something and work. And I just get to yell at people and then yeah. it's like, bravo. And then, and I, I, but that was very quick. I have turned into like domestic bliss so quickly. And it, um, it's surprising too, like because this was my entire thing was based on this my 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 status in the industry, the the you know the revenue. It's amazing how little you can live off of when that stuff stops. And um, I went from my minimum being forty a year, I thought would be good for the next twenty years, to now thinking I could do four. Yeah, if they can put them together. Yeah, if they um, can put them together, yeah. So one of the things that uh, most people won't know about you, but you are you are like a uh, almost a uh, a real leader in the speaker community. You run mm -hmm. a, a a Facebook group that speakers go into and and share tips, and that had to be a place. Now you sound like you you're you, you're reacted really positively and uh, you know healthily to it. What what was the reaction from most of the other speakers that that you going was there was it was it was there anger was there frustration yeah. was there disbelief what what, what were you hear, hearing back i think it's it's you know speakers are are you know first and foremost humans so you had the range of emotions from everybody right from denial and doubt anger sadness um you know uh, like all across the board because you know it's not just our profession that was taken away it's most professions were taken away but also ours will be one of the last ones to come back uh, yeah. especially in my my like there's a lot of niches in, in in speaking but mine is large events like large gatherings literally everything that's happening in the news right now that's what i do i speak at i do keynotes yeah i, I don't do training or, or workshops or breakouts like i i perform i'm a storyteller on stage and that's what i i i i really do and i was born to do and so there's part of that, but it's, it's also when you have a community, right? One of the biggest parts is, is, you know, trying to lead a community by it's, I think leadership's a verb, I think what you do. So what we thought was, what was the best for the community? So we did a Facebook live every weekday, um, at 11. Uh, and then we did a zoom open zoom room for anybody who wanted to drop in right after at noon. And we did that for the first two months. Did you feel you were a counselor, You're just coaching them through oh, to an extent? No, 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 no. I think that um, I think, to be honest with you, that that we got more out of that than everybody. Like it's a, it allowed us to still have frequency, to still be talking, to still do this, and to still. Most people, I think, in speaking are in it because they're very passionate about their message, and when you take away passion on uh, on the stage, and there's no outlet online, it's a tough spot. So we just wanted to keep that opening where the passion come out. Maybe it's a passion about the profession at the time. There's the loss of it. And, but it was more about, okay, so what do we do right now? Yeah. And, yeah. and also, and also that it's okay that you're not doing anything right now. Cause when you come in and say, you need to do this, well, it's like, no, we're not, nobody's working from home right now. It's a pandemic and you're at home. 
Yeah. Right? This is not work from home. Like I, 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 I'm, you, I've been working from home for, um, that's a fancy way of saying I've been unemployed for 17 years. I've been, you know, an entrepreneur for 17 years. I've been working from home since I had a home, but yeah. it's, this, this is not working from home. This is yeah. not, this is, this is, and we all deal with it differently. So you should not get productivity guilt, nor should you get guilt about being productive. Like it's yeah. whatever, it's however we work it. Like, and this is not like each person is different for me. Each, each hour is different for me, right? Each hour, man. I I'm like, I'm, I get down to this, I guess we're in the basement here. And, and so I have the corner with a Mac and I'm like, I'm going to get everything done today. And I, I hop on and 20 minutes into it, I just see or think of something and I'm like, well, that day's done. And it's just like, <laughs> it's like it, nothing gets, but you're exhausted at the end of the day. And you're still exhausted. And I feel like, oh, I've done nothing. I'm like, no, you got through the day. Sometimes that's enough. Most of the time that's enough, especially right now. We, I, I always say that, you know, we, we can always spare some kindness, but right now that kindness also has to be to yourself. You've got to be kind to yourself right now. There's so much. Um, uh, uh, um, kind of this, like the, this hindsight remorse happening. I could have done this. I should have done this. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, no, n nobody, you know, it's just like make a decision today that you'll be proud of tomorrow. And that's all we can do. And when, but the key here is when new things come, when new information comes or when new energy comes for you, you base your decisions based on that recent information, not, you know, you know, past regret on something yeah. and it's okay. One foot in front of the other, everything above that is just gravy. It's it's a funny. It's it's being raised in Catholic church. I think has given uh, obviously has its own issues. But I have this Catholic guilt thing that happens. Yeah. And for me, one of the most interesting aspects of this is everything is better. Uh, not not everything is better, but everything business wise is better. Like our the YouTube channel is popping. I, yeah. You know, the, our engagement is up across all platforms. Yeah. And I'm feeling guilty about that. Yeah. Because, and, and it's true. I, I laughed a little bit as I did it because I've said this enough times now that I'm kind of past recognizing that it's, I didn't do something wrong. Nevertheless, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it creates an, in, an interesting kind of cocktail of emotions. It does, and, and, it, and, and you can't win. And you can, no. but the thing is right now, especially like if you're in marketing right now too, especially or, or your own business and you're like, you're wondering when, like you, you still want to have a business and especially if your business is virtual where you can still sell and ship and it hasn't been as disrupted as a, a, a brick and mortar location. The problem is, oh, do I send an email? Do I send one that says our, our CEO is, you know, with us through these trying times? Well, then we don't want to do that because then people are going to say, well, why would you even leverage this pandemic? But then if you don't address it in the email you send out, then they're like, what are you tone deaf? And he's like, you can't, it, it's really a lot where we can't, you feel like you can't win as a business right now, but that also all those businesses are humans. And if we mm -hmm. cut each other some slack right now, a little more empathy and understanding, again, including ourselves, then that becomes less tense. And, and, but although I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I really don't need another email from saying that we're in this together. Like I, I, like I just got some emails from casinos in, 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 in Vegas. They're like, we're reopening. And this time we're cleaning the rooms. You're like, well, yeah, what, were you, what were you doing tough. before? And, uh, you know, and, you know, airlines are like, this time we're going to clean. And you know, the, the trays, you know, like I've been on a lot of planes and a lot of hotel rooms. What were you doing before? And yeah. And the coping mechanism. I mean, you, you also are in a position where the coping mechanisms that businesses should be doing, or one of the, one of the ways that they can weather this storm is the philosophy that you've been teaching from the stage, at least since your book was published, but it's really, you kind of sit back and go, yeah, I, I've been telling you guys this for a long time. You haven't been listening. It's, I just, I, you know what I'm trying to always find, like right now, the problem is like we see, you know, on, you know, you're on your, you're on your phone and you're, you're going, you're scrolling. It, it's the, it's the endless scroll and, and literally it's endless, right? It will just not stop feeding you stuff all day, all night when you're looking at it. So I've been putting my phone down and just kind of leaving it plugged in. I, Steve, I've never done that. The only time I've done that was like on a cruise and I locked the phone in a safe and there's no signal anyways. I've been going five, six hours a day just plugging my phone in beside the bed upstairs and just going out for the day because we control our own noise. We can't control what's going on in so much of the world. We can't control what goes into our brains and into our minds and into our heads and then into our hearts. And then because that, whatever comes in goes out. And so I've been staying off of a lot of it. I'll do my morning check and make sure because of when you write books about connection and stuff, people want to connect with you. So they're going to send you a tweet or something like that. I want to make sure I want to see those, but then I put it away or I just go to the places that bring me 
a lot of happiness. Like I, I go to Instagram to smile and laugh, you know, mm -hmm. into hard things where, and it depends on who you follow. Like it, it does not means Instagram's good and Twitter's bad or whatever, but like Twitter, I go to my lists mm -hmm. and I read certain things I want to see from that. And then when I want to well, dive into, there, yeah. yeah, when I want to dive into, uh, uh, you know, learning more about what's happening in, in my area or something about COVID, then I go to those resources I want to see, but I control that. And, and the problem is like, well, Facebook's full of a cesspool of comments. And I'm like, those are your friends. Like, I'm just like, you, you choose, <laughs> you're connected with them. And I'm like mute or unfriend are very powerful things. And yeah. you never should have people, to explain yourself. And you people discover that for the first time. Oh, it's beautiful. I use birthdays, by the way. And that's the most cruel thing in the world. But upcoming birthdays, I'm like, mm, let me see who I don't know. If I wouldn't, you know, stand beside you and blow out a candle with you, I'm going to take <laughs> you off there. Yeah. So happy I'm birthday. If, if if I rely on it now, I have a good friend who, for some reason, she won't be my friend on Facebook, even though she's friends with everybody. She goes, no, we're real life friends. We don't have to be friends on Facebook. I go, OK, fine. Except I miss her birthday all the time. And she gets mad at me. What kind of friend are you? I'm a Facebook friend. I'm shallow. So if you want me to say happy birthday, make me your friend on Facebook, for God's sake. Dude, I, you know what? I love, I always love the, I guess partly it's because it's being Canadian, but I love the passive aggressiveness sometimes, which is never intended of the day after birthday post of the birthday, you know, recipient, which is thank you all who gave me the birthday messages yesterday on my wall. I'm like, oh, I didn't do that. I mean, like, I'm just like, <laughs> I think they wrote that post to passively aggressive call me out because I didn't wish them a happy birthday. So. My oldest daughter purposely never greets me for my birthday on the day of. She says it should be a birthday week. <laughs> So she does. She does it a few days later. I think it's just to send me a lesson because she knows I'm sitting there at home going, "Is she gonna call? Is she uh, just, just find just find out? Pull, go into calendar, re put repeat yearly, and then it'll come up on your phone." That's what I had to do with uh, siblings and stuff too. It really helped me. <laughs> so let's talk survival techniques. Yeah. So you've 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 now done you know kind of you got yourself healthy at home. You're mm -hmm. cocooned. Yeah. But you've got to be looking at your business, your yeah. main income. Yeah. is not going to be back for two years yep. maybe yeah i'm guessing two years yeah so what's scott going to do for two years how how do you how does somebody like you with your background and your and, and your content mix how do you pivot and how do you how do you reinvent yourself now for this time well you know first part is obviously in, in basic business 101 right it's either there's two ways to do you know, is either increase revenue or decrease expenses or both so the goal right now it was just it was a hard look at every single penny. And it was a hard look for that, you know, Alice and I sat down and, and I, I think if you have a significant other, you should be treating them significantly better than anybody else. And so you sit down and you talk and you have these conversations. And before this, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I was, uh, I was bougie Scott. I'm still bougie Scott, by the way. I'm just like, it just, it, it's, <laughs> it's just, a, it's economy Scott at this point. And, but the, the, looking at it and saying, okay, so what, what is need and what is want? And we went through all that. But the second part is, okay, instead of trying to, to getting out and saying, let me change my content, my talk and just go virtual and then shift it into a COVID related kind of adversity type of thing and go, okay, so what have I not utilized of what we've either already done or my best skills? So one thing Allison's been doing, she's the writer of the two of us. She's the writer of the, of, the, of the books and I'm the guy who does this yapping stuff. And um, she's gone back, she's doing it right now and she's going through all six books and a bunch of stuff from the podcast and saying, where's all those diamonds we haven't mined yet in different platforms? Because we've spent the past decade growing things and it was very simple. I created content, social, got noticed on Twitter, got the book deal. The book leads to the stage. The stage leads to more stage. The book leads to more stage. So everything, the funnel went towards getting Scott on stage. That's how we make money. Mm -hmm. It went this way. So then we said, okay, you, the funnel is no longer, nothing's pouring out of that funnel. How do we shift that funnel? Not throw the funnel away, not just toss it in the garbage and start again and do a brand new talk, which I have no reps of, I have no experience with, and I'm thinking I'm going to charge the same, which is also quite ridiculous in our industry where we're trying to charge the same as it would be at going to an event. I'm like, it's not the same value. Like, no, it's the same information. I'm like, it's not the same experience. It's not the same thing, nor do I want to do a keynote like this. You know, yeah. I don't like, we should be taking, since we're on the big stage, we should be making it much, much more intimate and smaller, like doing a talk Q and a and drilling down and stuff. So we're going through all of our stories and we're taking key concepts and then stories and examples. We have no YouTube stuff based on that. It's just all me on stage and our show. So we're going to start making the video on it. We're going to start making more posts on it and blogs is where can you take your evergreen content that you've already created 
You just have to mine for it. You just have to grab it and say, what will work? And that's not always easy to do, but that's like the, the lowest hanging fruit and the best positioning. So if you can do it, then you, then you go and start mining for that. And that's what we're doing. Right. And so my job is learning this stuff. Like I didn't do, I wouldn't, I did a webinar last week. It was my first paid one in this whole time. So it was our first revenue. And I refused to do one until this time because it took me two months to try to learn just this stuff properly, just to learn Ecamm properly and to do the actual digital side of it versus just going off of a one camera bad sound and saying it's the same because it, it just doesn't make any sense. You can't do that. So the webinars, you know, that, you know, it'll, we can live off of very few of those a year and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and just it's keeping our expenses as low as possible. So and, finding the revenue. So I want to drill into the webinar thing because you know I'm a big fan of webinars. That's yeah. you know so we've been doing them a long time. I love yeah. them. Yeah. But every week we throw a quick promo for webinar Wednesday. Um but with when you, as it, you've experienced your first one that you planned from the beginning yeah. to deliver. What was that experience like? What, where was the value and where were the challenges that you have first what what platform did you use? Uh so I used Ecam and they were using Zoom so I went Ecam so you use your virtual, virtual camera. camera, so you had control, so you could switch your sources, and you could add, uh, and you could add stuff. How many people were on the webinar? Uh, four hundred and eighty, and they used Zoom webinar, so they didn't use the Zoom meeting; they used the webinar package. So, what was what was the experience like from you? First of all, the total sense of disconnect of not knowing whether anything was landing wasn't that strange. And that's the thing; like I've done, like I've done, a, you know, in my history, I've done plenty of you know webinars in the back in the day of of you know, tele seminars and you know yeah. everybody phoning in on a bridge line and but this was my first one of like okay this is the replacement for your talk like this is now the world and it's it's is like is exactly what you said you're sitting there going is this landing is any of this landing and like I'm, I'm I I work so much off of the 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 visual and auditory cues on stage and my it's so much based on humor because I usually I get them laughing and then I hit them with the point right once I get them when you're laughing you're listening. Okay. And that's when you're laughing, you're waiting for the next joke. And then I can hit you really with a solid point because my goal isn't that joke. Although I love the laughter, my goal is the point. And that's actually why I'm brought in is to hit that point. And I don't know if I'm hitting that point. And I know th the bits I do, like the ones I practice, I know they resonate because I've done them on stage so many times, but it's still weird because that's my fuel. Yeah. Their laughter, their applause is my fuel. And you can see at an event when they get into it more, I get into it more. Yeah. And also and I'm timing changes slightly. Every yeah. everything changes. And then it's also working with so I wanted to make sure that it wasn't a webinar that was just my talk and slides that I've just pushed online. I wanted to make it more of a an actual kind of, you know, webinar type of thing versus, you know, just a virtual version of my in-person keynote. But it was I when I finished and it went great and they were happy. But here's the thing. They're like, all right. So the guy came on who was co-hosting and he came on. He says, and it was great. And there's a, there is a former client of mine. They were bringing back all their favorite keynotes. And he's like, thanks so much, God. I'm like, you're very welcome. And then they were continuing on doing something else. I just clicked end Zoom for me and I got out of it. And I just sat right here and I just went, I j well, this, okay, I guess it's over. And it was so odd. It was so weird. And I'm just like, I don't know what to do. It was just, yeah, like I just did my thing, I think. I know the exact the exact sense of um, being cut off from the stream that yeah because like doing television that that happens on live feeds you're on a live television show right. you're doing a hit from a studio or from your whatever your location is and they end that and it's just like boom it's just like you're drifting and literally yeah. you're like that you're you're, yeah. you're not centered anymore because when I did and I did this so I did something like this and this is uh, uh for another one I was talking to them just right before coming on here but I I so I switched it around to make it so I'm in the slide but also yeah. my monitors here so yeah. when I say to people you know sound on is, is 3.4 million I'm actually reading the slide right now and it looks like I'm literally reading the slide, the slide. so, so you it's did some good staging good stuff it, it was the staging of it and the practice and the reps and the problem is we don't have those reps if we hadn't done all those webinars before all this like we're all everybody's now a virtual speaker but do you have the experience of it to be able to because it's not about even this it's about if it hits the fan do you know what to do yeah. Do you know what to do right now? If this, like, if this thing goes wrong and this DSLR camera goes out, I could switch to this. Yeah, I could switch this really quick. Now it looks different. You know, you're seeing behind the curtain, but I, I, I know that if this DSLR, which are famous for just saying, you know what, ah, forget it. Yeah. You know, it's just turning I mean, off. I mean, whatever. 
yeah. you you've got to be able to pull because the the about the keyboard professional speaking is the word professional. Yeah. And the problem is we're, we're trying to sell this by saying, oh yeah, I can do virtual. And then we're like, we need to figure this out. There's so much more that can go wrong here. Before all this, I showed up with a USB key and said, let's do this. And if something went wrong, you got people, you got people to figure out. Plus I'm there. So the worst part is I'm going to have to, I don't know, sit on the side of the stage and everybody gather a little closely. Now yeah. something goes down or off, you're done. Yeah. Now let me ask you, did you, did you engage with the chat? Did you engage? Yeah. With Cause in my mind, the, the difference between doing live, one of the keys live is the energy we get from the people around us. So I hate when webinar, uh, when they deliver a webinar and they disable chat, because then you're not getting the social proof. That's, that is people around you laughing, leaning in, leaning back. That's the attention and the energy you get from the room. How did you deal with the chat? So one of the things for me, uh, luckily for me in speaking is one, I don't get nervous. And that is just a, um, I, I, <laughs> I, that's not a skill. I'm missing a synapse in my brain that says, you know, wet your pants before going on stage. It's just not, I'm so fortunate for that. But, you know, the, the, I'm always, I love responding to things in real time. And with keynotes at large events, you know, you don't get to really do Q&A. You don't really get to do a lot of it because it's a performance. You're setting the tone for the day and then you're sending them on their way to the trade show, the breakouts, whatever it's going to be. And with this, not only do I like using the comments, it's one of the most valuable parts of it because for me, like I can, I can really go and and run with stuff, and and, and I can see that you know when, when you said somebody right now uh, you appreciate their comment, which I just saw you put in the comments, I can work that in there, and yeah. so when people are 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 when when you know when anybody says something like I love the the, the musician comment, and, and when when you know, Doctor Jackson comes in and says this is so helpful for them, like you when you work that in, people feel seen, mm -hmm. and that's the big key right now. We can't. That's again my biggest problem by saying no. I can deliver it the same online. You don't want it the same online. You want it to be like this. You want it to be that I'm talking to you, because it's, you're not sitting around with 500 other people. You know, you know, it's you at your computer. You may or may not be wearing pants right now. A dog is doing something over there, and a kid may or may not need something. And you're just like, get to the point. And it's different. It's so different. When you're at an event, you have a monopoly on their time. Unless they're looking at their phone, but don't worry, I'd call them out anyways. But this way, they can have a hundred things going on because it's a freaking pandemic and we're all at home. So it's not going to be the same experience. But if I call out somebody's name, you know, I I I have the ability to then call them and say, you know, uh, Mr. Rudolph said this on this the chat, and this and 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 then uh, uh, David Guthro said this on the chat. You know what I mean? Like so, like we have these things that we can say, no, I'm here because we also have another thing here, which is in Zoom, and everybody's so zoomed out a lot of times when mm. people are in there. Like I, I'm guessing this is a non scientific 100 guess that 75 percent of the time on Zoom, you're looking at your own feed. Right. Yeah. It's it's not because you want to look at yourself. You're like, oh, my hair. Am I looking like that or the lighting? And how am I sitting? Because that's just the, the psychology of it. It'd be like going to an event and everybody sat there like this, but they're, the, the camera was on their face the whole time. And they're watching you and they're like, oh, do I look like that? Oh, do I look like that? This isn't normal times. And this deems for not having normal talks like this. Like, let's talk to the lens and talk to the camera. But this is a different skill set. Like, you know, more than anybody that speaking to a camera you know, is different than speaking to humans in an audience. And, and, and we have to learn those things too, instead of just saying, I'll figure it out. We got to yeah, do and, that. And, and it, it does get easier. I mean, you, you know, a great example for me is I've been watching the late night talk show hosts that are doing the stuff from their homes. And I've been doing it fascinating because obviously I haven't done TV for years, uh, recognizing what their challenges were as well. I, for me, it's been, uh, there's been a lot of uh, curiosity just seeing how the different professions that I kind of touch are all handling it and yeah. watching like a Jimmy Fallon or these guys doing their stuff from home and seeing how much, how unique it is for them and how they struggled the first few times as they were doing their monologues and stuff. Yeah. Did you see how, how awkward these, these guys who have done two, 3000 live broadcasts, you know, real professionals, the best there is. Yeah. They struggle and they were just, they were like a duck out of water, just kind of waddling around trying to figure it out and saying their jokes and then say, that didn't sound funny. And you could just see the machinations turning in their heads and the insecurity oh, bubble up to the surface. Oh. And I thought before all this, like it, that I 80% I, of the world is, is they're really hard to do on camera. They couldn't do it on camera because it's really difficult to do, but doing it live. Like I remember doing a, a it was a post or a video 
a couple years ago when the live started coming out on Facebook lives and, and YouTube was aligned to go live. And I'm like, look, if you haven't mastered speaking into a camera, don't even think about going live. <laughs> Just work on doing video first because doing this is hard, but doing this with chat coming up something and then somebody, a troll comes in and then starts putting obscene material on there. And you're just like, it's enough to make you just, just pass out. And there's, there's, but you can get reps. It's reps. Everything's about reps. And you know, like, like the late night host, they got the reps, but they didn't get the reps in doing it like this. Mm -hmm. So although it helps them be able to, to do certain talk show things or even a monologue type of thing, it's, we are not doing a virtual thing right now. We are virtual and we're wearing seven hats, right? We have to be a moderator, IT. We have to be a videographer. We have to be a lighting technician, a sound technician, an internet connection technician. Like there's so many things going on that it's also that we're like, no, I get it. So we shouldn't be holding those people to that level of accountability, but they also shouldn't be selling it at that level. And you, you, also, know shouldn't be, and you also shouldn't not try and do better just because it's hard. I. Uh, the thing that I miss the most, uh, you know, when people ask me about going from TV to this is I miss the crew. I miss being part yeah, of it. Yeah. I say every single person on my team has been replaced by a USB port. Yeah. And, and that's kind of, it, it's amazing. It's phenomenal that we can do it. I mean, can you imagine if this was 10 years ago? What a, what a, what a, wow. what a, what a, just a situation would be in. Oh my goodness. Everybody's on, or yeah, you, you put it back. It's like, uh, am I on the phone? I got to dial up and get into this thing. And it's just like this. We're so, we're also so fortunate that we do add this tech at this time than it was before, because it's so, so different now and how fast tech move is, moves that we can be at this point to at least have this type of thing. And then watching we can... every profession pivot. My, my wife's a teacher how yeah. she just how she's be oh. how she's learned new ways of doing these things so i've got a business question for you can can i just add a comment with the teacher thing there by the way coming from a family yeah. of teachers um if anybody wondered why um teachers go on strike or try to get fair pay if you don't pay them all now fairly after all this yeah well i don't even know what to say anymore yeah. you just we all know even more so you're like oh you have to teach the oh it's teaching ain't easy at all teachers nurses all should be getting um big big raises. Yeah. No, and we rely on them and we, yeah. And, and just how they've, without complaining, they without, have just, just go, jumped yeah. in and, and done what it takes and what, what they're asking from them every day, they're asking something new. It's a, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So you've now done your first revenue model webinar. You've got a sense of how you can make a living going ahead. Yeah. When you look at planning your business, are you looking at this as this is the way it is or do you have this is the way it is until I can go back? Like, are, are you are you like okay? This is the this is life now. A little a little bit of both. Um, it, it's I always say I I I don't think it's going to go back to the way it was, but it won't be the way it is. Right. So the way we're going forward, I think will be a hybrid of something. I re, I really hope. Look, uh, you know, th throughout history, when in the worst times of either, you know, our society or the world through the worst times come some pretty incredible things. And, um, I, I hope the good things still stay. I know they all won't. And some of the bad things will still stay, but the things like just having the option, I don't think everybody's going to be working from home in two years from now. I think the option is much more open. And I think because the, but the, 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 the spill off of that is that people who have like, um, uh, have a disability and have been been screaming for work from home kind of accommodations for decades. And every single company's like, we can't do that. Now they're like, oh, wow, now you can. So it's opened up this opportunity for a very, you know, underrepresented group of people who who were, were trying to say, look, I, I, am, I am productive on this, but you are making this barrier. And, and I think life's about removing barriers from each other. And I think that's a positive and I want to go there. And I don't think we're also learning now the other extreme too. I don't think we're working from home right now, like I already said, but this is a lot about what working from home is you're isolated and that's also not good. And I think, you know, more remote working locations and more type of things where at least you have that vibe of a community. Look, humans need community that, that just, that feeds our soul. And it could be, it's a virtual community and like the speakers group, I, that, that feels family to us. And that's a community and it's virtual. And I think you can create incredibly strong ties virtually but we do need each other in person eventually. And, and, um, and I, we're, we've battened down the hatches here. We have not, there's seven of us here. We have not left the house in two months other than a grocery run once every seven days. And every grocery run with seven people looks like you're hoarding. And, 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 and then, and then one you, I've, I've got groceries after the live stream today. 
and it causes me more anxiety than anything. Yeah, it does. It, I'm, I'm telling you, it's just like we just, and we're so fortunate. I'm so, we're so privileged that we have a home and we have the ability and we have some space in here where if this was, you know, five years ago, we had a different house and there was no space and we were renting. And then we, this is the first house I've ever bought. And we don't have a landlord that is deciding whether or not they're going to let us slide on the rent for a bit because they're not working. And mm -hmm. we're lucky to live in a country that has allowed the, um, you know, mortgage forgiveness or it's like, it's, it's so a lot of things that I had no control over. I, that's, that, that's really what privilege is. It's, you know, I was born, I was just lucky to be born here and born this way. And, and so many other things is I just look at it now and say, so what good things can we take out of this to keep forward with us? We did a show on that a little while back. So with you, with what you've learned from this, what lessons are you going to take as a positive? What are you going to take from this and you want to keep in your life if they, when we do return to some form of normal? That um... Scott just left. This is a prime example of Scott's question. Of, what do you do when something like this happens? Something like this happened, although it looks like he's back. <laughs> Great example, Scott. Speaking of what's <laughs> going on, I'm out and now I'm back. That's right. And I just panicked. I didn't panic. That's killing right. me, man. I'm just killing me. Oh, I love oh, it. Thank, so, thank you, internet gods, for allowing an audience. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, only because it's been screwed up so many times in the past things. I've done the past few months. I knew to look at, just go click here and come back. And oh, this is where we are. And I got, you, you know, you talk about... Um, speaker disasters before i before i let you talk about the, this this very serious topic i learned my best lesson ever back at one of my very first keynote talks that i ever gave and, and and i used to use a lot of technology back in the early days and i don't know if you remember the macintosh cx computer it was a big box yeah and i used to carry that up on stage put it on stage and this was in the day of the three gun projectors to yeah. only three gun projectors that had to be tuned by a, a guy with a mad scientist hat yes. in order to make it work <laughs> i was showing before the internet, before we had HTML, I was showing interactive media, how you created an interactive kiosk or something like that. It was a product called Macromind Director. And so my talk was actually to educators, but it was, I would actually demonstrate stuff live. I was crazy, I was a mad scientist type stuff. I would do this stuff. And I was in an amphitheater full and I had all this set up and it used to take like an hour and a half to set up just the gear. Right. Just so we could, you know, and I had a computer, two hard drives, a display monitor that was then geared in so that I could see what I was doing. And I was speaking and I, the audience started to gasp in like seven, eight minutes into my talk. And I looked and I turned just in time to see the, the, it was a banquet table, the leg collapse on the banquet table and the entire, the entire monitor and everything go down like this slow motion. This is emblazoned in my memory the monitor tumbled one ways, my hard drive tumbled the other way off of the table, hit the ground as the hard drive, which had all of my demos for a speaking tour I was on, this was just one location of a tour, hit the ground and blue and white sparks exploded out of the back of the hard drive. And then this black <laughs> billow of smoke slowly rose and <laughs> spiraled its way up to the lights. And the audience was just like, oh, and I turned back to them and said, well, that's not good. <laughs> and that was it. I said, because now I had no, I said, I've got an hour and a half of talk that I'm supposed to give you guys. And now it's like, imagine if you will, that I was showing you this. It was. It would have been really cool if you know you could just see what I was going to do for you. Let me describe it in a way that doesn't make it sense because you can't see it. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my gosh. It was a, that was that was a, that was a moment that I will never forget. And you survived, right? No, yeah. you you do. I I fell off a stage. You fell off the stage, dude. You get I, really excited sometimes when you're moving around. I do it, and it was it was during the intro. Like I walked out and fell off the stage the front how but was it into an orchestra pit or what type of stage yeah. was so it? it was in atlanta at a gig a couple years ago right before um we were going to head on a, a a disney cruise and so it's like my last gig before we were you know, meeting up with the family and then going on the cruise and i walked out and it was just a weird setup of the stage and the guy was introduced me at the at the lectern and he was going to supposed to turn to me and kind of shake my hand but he stepped back and I didn't realize he was going to step back. So I stepped back and there was a gap between the stairs and the stage and the podium had a little like this little island to the left. And for some reason there was a gap. It made no sense. So I stepped back and I just went, 
right off the back of the stage and it was slow motion. It was still <laughs> slow motion. And, and I'm just like, and I, ooh, and I just went, well, this is it. And I just fell right back and the man bun caught the curtain, I think, and, and lessened the blow. And I just popped back up. And uh, Gary Gary V was the keynote the next day, and I just popped back up and like, let's see Gary V do that. And uh, uh, <laughs> and um, but I popped and I made the mistake of when I finished the talk, I was had to go, jut over to a book signing, but I needed I wanted Allison to know, I wanted my wife to know that I, I'd fallen because my wife also was probably on it was probably on Twitter, yeah. so I wanted to know. And so I texted her in all caps. Um, I said, and I'll make a, a show friendly version of this. I fell off the effing stage, all caps. And then I put my phone and turned it off because I had to do a book signing for two hours. Here's a friendly piece of advice for y'all. Don't text your wife in all caps that you fell off a stage and then go radio silent for yeah. two hours. She was calling like the cruise line. Can we bring a wheelchair on? He's like, she thought I was in traction. Like she thought I was just yeah. And uh, yeah, so don't uh, don't uh, do that. Yeah, the light goes out too. It's a perfect time. I, I, I'll commiserate. It's, this is like the shark, the the jaws thing. When yeah, that's not a bite. This is a bite. Yeah. Uh, doing a musical, I fell off the back of the stage once too, and it was an open stage, and 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 it was in it was in our dress rehearsal, and the horrified look. I'll never forget as I'm falling backwards, the horrified look on the choreographer standing at the front of the stage. She was more scared than I was because like I'm an old dude falling off the back of the stage. It can't be good. But I wasn't hurt. I was just and, and I came up and I was I was okay. It was amazing, and it was just yeah. my pride. But I I have a a great uh, a GIF I can use from my phone to people when they think it's funny. And how many talks have you done? That one will live in every person who was there's memory as well as in yours. Yeah, five hundred talks, and that's my that's my brand. Falling <laughs> off the stage. Fell off the stage. Survived. Uh, my wife mad at me. You fall off one stage, and there you go. You're the guy. Fell off the stage. <laughs> so to, so. What do you take away from this? You, you've you've now been home for two months, mm -hmm. which for you for the last twenty years has to be a record. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do you take away from this that you say? You know what? This is a lesson that was worth learning from this shift. You just it was a good reminder that you don't get time back, and and we, you're going to choose how to spend it. And each and I mean each day, and and also though, but don't feel regret of the time you already spent. It's spent. It's like money. It's it's gone, and I just think that every day is. I try to in my head. I try in my head to say, is is it what I'm saying or doing? Is it with kindness? And and it's a it's a it's a reset for me because I literally have, you know, professionally nothing to do when it comes to what was before. Like it, that's all gone. Like I, I just had a call right before here for a pre call for a webinar, and they're like, we want to do a little test next week. Is Thursday good? I'm like, um, yeah, 2020 is good. Like what what I got openings. Like it's just like. <laughs> It's, and it's realizing that uh, if, you know, if I had everybody ask if, if money was no object, what would you do? And oh, you'd spend time doing this. And I'm just like, I have the, I have the privilege and the, the, the great fortune to be able to not have to panic and say, I, I've got to do something today right now and, and, and kind of do something to, to make the money that we've saved a little, little bit that I can say, okay, what are we gonna do over the next couple months versus tomorrow? that allows me the privilege to say, so what, how do I make today best? And, um, cause we don't get this time back with our kids, with ourselves, with our significant others. And that's it. And, 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 and to realize also that my worth is not my work. My worth is not the stage. And I'm I, honestly, man, I, instead of 40 a year, I'm going to be, I'll be good with four or eight or whatever will come when it comes. And I'll find other ways because I was doing 150,000 miles a year. Of the, you know, uh, at least on the plane, and and and, and I loved it, and I do, I I love the stage. I I I feel I was born to do it, and I love the travel. I've been to so many. I've spoken in almost every state and province. I've been around the world doing this stuff. My goal, one of my goals, is to get to every ballpark, hockey arena, basketball arena, football stadium in North America. I love sports, and I'm over halfway done. And I'm like, I don't care if I finish it. I I I yeah, maybe this is my coping mechanism now, but I'm I I haven't been so at peace in a very long time with just being present. Like, I don't mean being here. I mean, being present here. I don't, I don't, I don't mean just physically present, but I mean, mentally present. Mm. And it, it feels, it feels really good in a lot of the world. That's not feeling good. And, um, there's still tension. There's still loss. And we had to put one of our dogs down, uh, oh. last week, Allison oh, lost wow. her father a few weeks ago. Like there's a lot of it's stuff you have to go through when it, when it's, and it's really hard, but when you have the foundation where you can respect and appreciate your own four walls and the people in it, it makes going through those issues and going through all of this a little bit easier.
Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. Thank you. I, I, I feel like I, I wanted to go into some later stuff, but I'm not sure we should now. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's time that, that we should wrap it up. I, Doug, you're asking how we put this on screen. I'm using StreamYard uh, to feed this. Have you tried? Have you broadcast with StreamYard, Scott? Um, so I'm using, yeah, I'm using, um, um, I'm using uh, Ecamm and then Restream dot io for for mine but same idea you know and we've used uh be live and we've used restream we've yeah. used them all and it's it's like this it's what what best can bring up the comments you know and what best is and also pulling them in the multiple streams it's, but also this is all i never focused on live much before all this right and now i'm like i need to go live on every platform and it's you know and, and people will have told you this but you're natural for it it's in, you're, you. you know this you're gonna find a whole different strike you obviously have i, I gotta give david props because he did come up with the line that you missed the opportunity to use. <laughs> I love me some Tim Guard too. Great dude. So funny too. I love him. That's good stuff. Um, so I'll, I want to kind of wrap things up with a, a little bit of a chat about the future of conferences and the fact that we're now, you've probably been invited to do a million virtual summits and everybody's yeah. trying to scramble and figuring out yeah. what's working and what's not as far as replacing that sense that the, the community events that we were doing, the, 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 the conferences. It's, it's, you know, the problem is it's now, you know, the people who were in on webinars before this and who had run them, you know, we, we got into a certain groove and we do a couple every year and we'd do it. Mostly it was branded ones. So we do like a, a, a sponsorship type of thing. And um, the problem is now since the only option is virtual for the most part. It's just everything is inundated, inundated with it. It's so overwhelming a lot in general. Um, but the best ways are the ones who do look at it virtually and say, so then how do we up the virtual engagement so we don't, because we can't we can't get in person. It's, it's just not the same. So what can we do virtually understanding it? And you, But you got to get out of your own head. It's not about virtually how we want it to happen. It's like what would be best for people at, in their homes, on their phones, on their laptops and their desktops on their TVs, some people, how, how do we make it best for them? And if it's, I'm multitasking for this webinar and a lot of my people be multitasking, then make sure that the people talking know that audio is the most important part of this. And I think audio almost always is the most important part of, of video anyways, but especially when people are multitasking, they have the zoom as one of 25 windows open, or they have it and they're doing something else in the house. or they're playing it through one of their home speakers or smart speakers or something is that audio is so crucial that working with those speakers, you have to be tech with them now too. It's not about a sound check. It's like a quality check mm -hmm. and that I, I'm, I'm grading people on, on also how virtually they can do it versus just the content. And also, can we make it a bit shorter? Can we leave breaks, not even for networking, but you know, life at home where you got to go to the bathroom, you got to do these things, all the things we used to be able to do at a, uh, at an in-person thing, but it won't still won't be the same value. Is it the breakout Zoom rooms? Is it putting people together a bit? Or is it just giving a break and saying, instead of a two-day conference, we're going to do a half day? You know, and just and it, it, like loading more things on people's plate right now because they're from home and you think they can do it is the exact opposite of what we should be doing right now. And not and, only are we as presenters, you know, or, or working from home, people that work with you or for you or they're members of your association, you know, taking their side of it, their position of it, surveying them. What would you like if your event's coming up in a, in a couple of weeks from now and saying, here's some options. What do you think? And asking your members or your customers or whoever they are. But again, that will also change. Yeah. Because depending on the timing and everything else that happens. So we also have to be flexible right now and adaptable. And it's also the type of conference that we're that that that's being replaced. Some of them have an educational component that's a, that's an obligation where they have trainings and they have to have you know there's a certain there's a certain obligation with professional associations that it's part of that it's right part of that they're there it's part of their certification or whatever this is education credits and stuff yeah exactly yeah exactly. but so much of boiling it down to what these conferences are valuable for was the networking hundred percent and that to me is like. You can deliver I hundred percent that you can deliver your message in any form, but sitting down, having a coffee with you, sitting down and having a coffee with somebody else, getting to know the people, the, just the, 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 the wine and cheese before meeting, meeting, talking to the executives within the company, understanding a little bit more about the challenges that they face and what their, what their world is really like. Those are the lost opportunities. And mm -hmm. that's the, have you seen any way that that is going to be replaced? Or is that something that's just, we're just going to have to, to, to deal, be, grieve over the loss of that for a period of time? 
I think so, uh, yeah, I think there's a there's a point where um, we're trying to do too much virtually. Um, like I just think that, uh, and I've seen some, you know, the, the virtual happy hours, the, I've seen some really great zoom breakout rooms and putting into smaller groups. I, I think one of the best things that we can do for people right now is, is also just not to overload that stuff. So when you're like, we have the, the, the speakers all day, then we have the mixer, then there's this, and then there's this, you're like, I'm, there's other things happening right now. And I'm not, a, the problem is, look, we're not away. When you're away at a conference, you can go, you can go into that conference. You can do every single part or as much as you want, but you're still away. When you're done, if it's one of those, if it's a travel one, you can go to your hotel room and get some peace and quiet. For some people, for a lot of people, that's their one trip of the year. That's their yeah. one outing of the year. That's their one time away from the rest of the family. That's their one time they can blow off steam. So you're trying to replace things virtually that actually you wouldn't do physically, right? You like you wouldn't. You wouldn't say people, okay, everybody at home, go do this and go do this. It's it's Scott gone away again. <laughs> Scott was talking about the experience of oh, he's back. And so you're not there, and you do this. <laughs> oh, your audio is back now. Back now, audio back now. You're back. You're back. You're Sweet. relatively back. But that didn't happen. So you stop there. You stop there. But we're, what we don't want to try to do is try to replace a lot of the in-person things because they won't be as good. They just won't be like, we're going to try that. No, you're not going to get, and actually it's going to make it worse. It's going to make it like, well, we'll do a, we'll do a mixer, but then it's like, it's going to be actually totally opposite of the effect you want. We're going to be looking at what do you have in the background of your screen right now? Like, what do you, like every Zoom thing I see, I'm like, which books are you reading? Like, it's, it's so... Yeah. Are you? So I, I, I busted your chops when you came on because you've got a really nice camera. I didn't realize. I thought you were using a virtual background, and I am so past the virtual. Are you past the virtual background? You know what? I I look at one. Yes, but two. I also have to think. You know, it's just kindness. You know, if you want to do a virtual background, do it. You want a green screen, whatever. You like just 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 you showing up is enough like that. You know what I mean? It's just I look. I'm not good reacting in kindness. I built an entire brand as rap just just running up the hill and yeah. screaming, right? That's 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 our brand because that's our personality. I, I I do not go quietly into things. And and but now it's just like, you know what? Do the zoom background, do the virtual thing. I don't care. You're showing up. That's a hell of a lot to ask on its own. So put polka dots back there, put a mountain you had never climbed back there, or Start maybe you climb with yeah, whatever you got to do, then as long you're showing up, that's a huge ask already. So have you checked out my books? I don't know if one of yours is on that show. <laughs> you look for your own books, don't you? You look for your own books first, don't you? Every time. <laughs> and I and I judge severely when I don't see it. Even though the math says this, this many has sold, this many humans, most people won't have it. You're just like, it looks like it. It looks like it. Scott Stratton, you have been good for my soul today, sir. I'm glad to hear that you are coping well and, in fact, uh, thriving as uh, as you're reinventing yourself and dealing with change. You give me lots of hope for my friends who are speakers that they're following your lead and reinventing themselves in a successful way. And uh, I know that everybody on the on the call today thoroughly enjoyed their time with us. And it's been good for my soul as well, Steve. I really appreciate uh, uh, coming on. Been a fan for a very long time. Yeah, right back at you. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Scranton, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to wrap things up. Next week, we'll be back with more. Tune in next week. I'll, I'll put you down into the room, Scott. There we go. Next week on Webinar Wednesday, I've talked to a whole bunch of teachers, uh, about uh, community educators, about what they do and how they have reinvented themselves. Uh, and they have come back, and and I've got, a, I've got a Webinar Wednesday. We're going to be talking about the process of taking studio classrooms, uh, music, dance, those sorts of things, and how they've reinvented themselves and the techniques that they're learning and how they're learning to use uh, the, online to extend their training. So let me just put in a link here so everybody that is not with us yet can sign up. Uh, just a minute. There we go. There we go. I didn't. Yep. Did it go in? Good stuff. There it is. That's for everybody there. So webinar Wednesday coming up next week, we're going to be looking at community teachers and community education. That's coming up on Wednesday. Thanks so much to Scott Stratton. Thanks to all of you. The community was great. The comments and the chat was going, was just fantastic. Uh, oh, Scott's back. <laughs> he disappeared for a sec. I am going to wrap things up. I will see you all next 
week for more Gray Matters with Steve Dotto. Those of you that join us webinar Wednesday, we'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks to April who managed the chat. That's it. Going to call it a day. Till next time, have fun storming a castle.